biggest password leak ever recently took place. AI companies busted again. Samsung introduced their ecosystem portfolio and more coming up in RH News episode 4. Our first story concerns Rock U 2024, which is the name given to around 10 billion leaked passwords. Needless to say, it's the biggest password leak yet. However, calling it a leak is a bit misleading. The file that was posted to a hacking site contained more than 9.9 .9 billion passwords from old and new data breaches that were gathered from around 4,000 databases across the last 20 years. The user who uploaded the file was named Obamacare. And I just can't mad. That, that name is so hilarious. Compiling 10 billion passwords? Yes, we can. Apparently, this isn't a standalone instance. Roku 2021, which contained around 8.4 billion passwords, took place in 2021. And this leak contains 1.5 billion new passwords since 2021. So it seems like a compilation tradition. Now, there's a lot of speculation being made around this topic. So let's look at the facts. This will allow any attacker with access to those passwords to hijack your account, given you haven't changed that password. In addition, brute force attacks are also possible. In layman terms, this is an attack where you try one password, then the second password, the third password, and so on till you get a match. There's good news and bad news regarding brute force attacks. The good news is for majority of websites and online portals, they already prevent these attacks as part of their cybersecurity suite and policy. Several techniques are deployed such as timeout where you have to wait before making multiple attempts, multi-factor authentication, banning, and a whole lot more. But the bad news is the rest of the online world is still vulnerable to this type of attack. Not to mention IoT devices like CCTV cameras, routers, appliances and more. Furthermore, a hacker with attention to detail can make that list even longer by adding numbers and special characters to the already existing passwords. So what can we do about this? Well, I'm glad you asked. Change the default password. So if your default password is admin admin or God forbid default, change it. Change your existing passwords and come up with brand new passwords. Don't just add a number or a special character to your existing passwords. Go to haveibeenpawn.com to see if you were in any of the data breaches. Use different passwords for different sites and devices. Enable multi-factor authentication ASAP. So two methods or even three or more for critical sites. Pay extra attention to your incoming emails and text messages, especially where the email is urging you to take urgent action, threatening you with consequences, etc. This big list is going to allow some people to email affected users with their old passwords. And and they might cross-reference that list with other data breaches to see what other information they can find about those affected users, like their leaked address, their legal name, their date of birth, etc. So they can combine that information and come up with a plausible scenario to blackmail you or try to pretend that they want to help you. Remember, there's always an explanation. Always take a moment to relax and critically think. If you know someone who's vulnerable to this, please inform them. Okay, we can go on, but that's it for now. Our next story is about AI companies, the holes that just keep on giving. After a detailed investigation, Proof News, a non-profit news outlet, found that subtitles from 173,536 YouTube videos across 48,000 channels were used by Eleuther AI. This company used the data from these videos without the consent of their owners in their data set called The Pile. Real quick, you can tell the respect or the lack thereof they had for creator's hard work. They called it The Pile. It's just one step away from calling it The Pile of Anyways, the pile has been used by Nvidia, Anthropic, Salesforce, and Apple. And I'm surprised Microsoft isn't in here. These companies have used the pile to train their various AI models. There were claims that the pile was used in Apple's intelligence, but Apple denies these claims. According to the company, the pile was used in open ELMs or open source efficient large language models and open ELMs don't power any of its AI or machine learning features. Pay attention to that language. Don't power. I've got so, so many questions. So let's run through some of them. Have open ELMs at any point in time contributed to Apple's intelligence in any shape or form? These LLMs, you said they were open source, right? And created for the community for research purposes. Do you acknowledge that by failing to do your due diligence regarding third party data suppliers, these open source LLMs can be used by anyone for commercial purposes? Do you take responsibility of the fact that a $3 trillion company got data from another company without the consent of the original creator? 
investigators. And the research is being done by using these LLMs that were based on non-consensual works. Did that research help you in any way when you were making any of the Apple intelligence's features? It's like saying our products weren't made in a sweatshop, but our supplier might have supported unethical work practices, so technically we're all right. And these are the companies that take Charger out of the box to save the environment and take the moral high ground. What a f***ed up world we live in. When asked for comment, other companies denied to comment, but a representative from Anthropic had this to say, and I quote, the pile includes a very small subset of YouTube subtitles. YouTube's terms cover direct use of its platform, which is distinct from use of the pile dataset. On the point about potential violations of YouTube's terms of service, we would have to prefer you to the pile's author, and end quote. Ah. Perfect. This one statement sums up everything that is wrong with these AI companies. A small subset? Are you f***ing kidding me? Yeah, it's not like we stole the entire website. I can't believe I have to spell it out. It's also your responsibility to learn more about your suppliers and partners. The second point is YouTube Terms of Service cover direct use of its platform. Yeah, it does, but that's not what's being done, is it? And then she's like, take it up with Pyle's author. These people genuinely think that it's okay to do this. Our laws and regulations are so outdated that these AI companies are literally stealing a creator's hard work. If I could get a little conspiratorial for a moment, I think it's brilliant. These third parties can be created by any big company to avoid responsibility. You can do all sorts of illegal things, blame it on a company that no one's ever heard of, and little to no legislation is covering it. Proof News has built a search engine, so if you think your YouTube videos might have been used in AI, give it a go. Link is in the description. Let's move on. Samsung introduced a bunch of their devices recently. I've discussed Fold 6 in detail and link is in the description. The other devices were Flip 6 with IP48 rating, camera upgrade, and a 300mAh battery upgrade. Watch Ultra, which is a premium lineup, a Galaxy Ring, which is a health monitor device and you shouldn't buy if you already own the watch, and Buds Pro 3. The pinch controls seem questionable, but the LEDs look cool and newer Galaxy devices can take advantage of the higher 96kHz rate as opposed to the previous 46kHz rate. Although Samsung is currently delaying the pre-orders for Pro 3s because of some quality control issues. Last story of the week, the entire world came to a halt when a software update to Falcon Sensor crashed windows across countless industries. CrowdStrike is a cybersecurity company, but instead it took down the entire globe. Airlines, restaurants, retail, health services, and so many more were affected by this. As this wasn't bad enough, Microsoft Azure Cloud Services also suffered an outage at the same time, but the company said that those two weren't related. CrowdStrike has apologized for the outage and reportedly has deployed a fix to remedy the faulty update code. It just goes to show you when our digital world works as intended, it's amazing. But when it doesn't, it's a haunting nightmare. We need to have more companies and competition within this space so we aren't solely relying on a single OS, single cybersecurity firm, and other digital products. But when a potential competitor does pop up, these big companies just acquire them or become a big shareholder or stakeholder. This shouldn't be allowed when it stifles the competition. European Union, get on it. Well, that's it for the latest news, guys. Tune in next time when we discuss some good news about Windows 10. Thanks for all the support. Please like and subscribe because... Camera speed, sound. Sound speed, so whatever. Oh, oh, we're filming? <laughs> How embarrassing. This is Rogue Hat. Catch you guys later.